In this video, I'm going to describe the uh, engine lube oil system in my uh, turbine engine in my Helicycle N750 Golf. The turbine engine is a uh, military surplus solar T62T-32, uh, which has been modified by Eagle R&D for the Helicycle and uh, then my lube oil system is uh, unique to my helicopter so uh, none of what I'm going to talk about really applies to a normal uh, engine, a military surplus engine. Okay here is a schematic that I drew of the uh, of the turbine engine as it's installed a factory uh, installation in the uh, helicycle and I'll show you how it works. Over here you see my red dot that is the uh, the oil tank which contains a couple quarts of synthetic aircraft turbine oil. Over here is the engine driven oil pump so there's a line that runs from the bottom of the tank into the side of the engine and then the oil pump is inside the engine you can't see it. Uh, one thing I've done uh, is I have a stand tube over here pointing back into the bottom of the tank which sticks up about a half an inch. So I took uh, the AN fitting that screws into the bottom of the tank and I epoxied a piece of quarter-inch uh, copper tubing in it that sticks up. So if there's any debris in the bottom of the tank, any uh, little pieces of Teflon tape or uh, any uh, metallic particles, uh, they would tend to sink to the bottom of the tank. And since this thing sticks up above the bottom about an inch, hopefully I'll get a fairly clean uh, supply of oil into the oil pump. So now picking up at the oil pump it then exits the engine to an external oil filter and this oil filter uh, is something that is uh, unique to the helicycle. So this is a, an Eagle R&D uh, oil filter housing that takes a standard Fram motorcycle oil filter. Uh, which you mount outside of the engine. The oil pump, at least in my helicopter, put out about 60 psi and about 60 comes out of the other side of the filter and the filter incidentally has an 18 to 22 psi bypass uh, relief valve so if it gets plugged up oil will continue to flow around the filter element. Once it comes out of the filter, it's plumbed back inside the engine, and you can see up here it's split into a number of different paths. One of them goes over and sprays oil on the gears in the uh, gear reduction unit. The other side goes into the uh, turbine assembly and sprays oil in that area, and uh, that's fairly complicated and sophisticated the way they do it. They spray some oil inside the hollow shaft and uh, it comes out the other side. You can read about that in the maintenance or the uh, overhaul manuals. The other two places that are looking at this oil are the oil pressure sensor and the oil temperature sensor. So oil comes out of the tank it ends up down in the bottom of the transfer case and the engine. These black lines then show oil path being pulled out of the bottom of the uh, transfer case and the engine by two uh, scavenger pumps which are also driven uh, from the, uh, the gear reduction unit. There's an accessory drive shaft that uh, powers both of these little pumps. They then take that excess oil and they pump it back into the tank. So it's a dry sump system. The oil lives in the tank, circulates through the engine in the transfer case, and then goes right back into the tank. Now the problem, or at least the problem I had, and a fairly common uh, situation, is the engine-driven oil pump 
puts out more oil than the two scavenger pumps can uh, remove. And so over time, oil builds up in the engine and in the transfer case. And the problem with that is it causes the engine to overheat because it starts getting uh, sucked up by the gears and splashed around and that causes excess friction in the transfer case and uh, that raises the temperature. So the problem that needs to be overcome is you need to uh, control that flow of oil coming uh, out of the engine driven oil pump to make sure it doesn't overpower the two scavenger pumps. And uh, People have come up with many different ways of doing that uh, from something as simple as taking some vice grips and crimping the line uh, leading from the tank to restrict the flow uh, to uh, different kinds of regulators. And so what I did, going to the next slide, is I added this part here that you see in light blue. This unit right here is a pressure relief valve which I've set at about 25 psi and all it is is a spring-loaded ball bearing that's blocking the uh, entrance to the relief valve and so uh, at low pressure the oil can't get through this valve and it doesn't go back into the tank but once the pressure exceeds 25 psi then it can overcome the spring pressure push the ball bearing back and flow around that and it circulates right back into the tank and so what that means is that the oil that's going into the engine and the transfer case is now at a reduced level the, the pressure is now only 25 psi instead of 60 and that's enough to uh, lubricate the engine in the transfer case and uh, keep the temperature down and the symptom that I had is after uh, flying for about a half an hour I would have to come back and land because my oil temperature would just slowly creep up until it got to the red line and uh, so this was the cure. So here you see a couple views of the assembly that I put together to solve the problem. Uh, in my hand is the oil filter housing that Eagle R&D provides and uh, and then there's a little manifold up above with four ports on it. That unit at the lower right is the oil pressure sender. The oil temperature sender is uh, just screwed into the side of the engine block so it's uh, it's not in the, uh, connected to this assembly. Now the, uh, the little pressure regulator is this guy right here looking at the left picture you see the little red dot that's the pressure relief valve right there. And so once the, the uh, pressure gets above 25 psi, oil just comes back down here and goes right back into the tank. Now let's go to the next slide and I will show you how the installation went. So this is how it's installed in the engine. Uh, this whole assembly mounts to the side of the engine block uh, to the uh, transfer case. The bearings that hold the two halves of the case together, not the bearings, but the bolts, socket head cap screw bolts, hold the two uh, halves of the transfer case together. And the bracket that I made uh, attaches with, uh, through two of those bolts. So it's sandwiched back there. There's not a whole lot of room. It goes between the uh, electronic uh, fuel governor and the engine itself. And uh, here you can see, I'll turn on my red dot again. This is the uh, line that feeds oil to the engine. And uh, I guess blocked behind this is the oil line back here that feeds the uh, gear reduction unit. Here we are again. This is the inline relief valve. And then it's plumbed off and goes through uh, this uh, line right here back to the tank. 
and that's how that works it works great for me so that's uh, this is a fairly short little video and I hope uh, I hope that helps you understand how that engine works because I know a lot of you are waiting for your engines or you haven't started them yet and uh, it took me a little while to sort all this out looking through the maintenance and overhaul manuals but uh, that's how it works okay well that's the uh, explanation of how uh, my lube oil system works uh, as I say it took me many months to finally come up with this solution I tried uh, quite a few things and it's been very reliable uh, I've been flying now for a year with no problems the uh, oil pressure just comes up to uh, 25 and it just sits there one of the other uh, symptoms that I uh, noticed before I came up with this fix is the oil pressure fluctuated all over the place one minute it would be 60 the next it'd be you know 30 it was just jumping around a lot so now it's rock solid engine stays very cool and uh, life is good uh, so for, thank you for watching uh, I hope this was of some use and uh, for more information you can go to my website at www.juanr.com where I have about 400 pages of uh, detailed information on my helicopter construction. Uh, all my logbooks and everything uh, are online at my website. So thanks again for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.